back in the day I had an RV. And for whatever reason, we had I had taken the mint chocolate chip ice cream and put it in the RV freezer for some reason, I forget why. And you know, when that when that stuff's in the freezer in the house, it was like, oh cool, I'm gonna get it right there. We're gonna go get it, right? But I guess I wasn't dopamine fueled enough. Like three, four, five days went by before I was like, all right, I really want it, so I'm gonna go get it. Well, it's, it is the molecule of drive. The way to think about dopamine is, is that it is a non-infinite yet renewable resource. Non-infinite yet renewable. What do I mean by that? Well, this relates to the, the energy drink caffeine question. Should you be doing all this stuff? Just as adrenaline, epinephrine, is released in response to psychological stressors, physical stressors, cold water, final exams, you know, broken relationship, excitement, I mean, these are generic molecules, right? I mean, they're, they're used to create activation states in the body. Dopamine is the molecule of motivation, pursuit, and desire. And it can be triggered by a number of different things. However, it is a non-infinite yet renewable resource. So if you have too big a dopamine release, let's say from methamphetamine, cocaine, Bam, we're going, we're going there. Street, we're going there. Or, <laughs> okay. or, or let's say, uh, to be fair, because I, I you know, know people, for, or from um, being in a lot of gunfights in, in a short period of time. The period immediately after that will involve a mirror symmetric decrease in dopamine. You don't go back down to baseline, you go below baseline. So we all should guard our dopamine peaks very carefully. A little bit goes a long way, a lot goes even further, but it also takes you down deeper afterwards. This is the basis of addiction. And this is the beautiful work of Anna Lemke and Rob Malenka at Stanford and elsewhere, showing that it- When it goes down, do we want it back right now? Ah, so the, the dip afterwards is actually associated with a molecule called dynorphin, which is the opposite of endorphin, and involves pain in the body. So for every bit of pleasure that we get from pursuit and getting the thing that we were pursuing, the crash that comes afterwards feels painful. And all that we need to do in order to return to a baseline of dopamine, renew that resource, is to wait and make sure that we don't try and trigger yet more dopamine in that time. So you asked about should I be taking caffeine in addition to training and blasting music. I always say people differ on this spectrum, but be careful about stacking dopamine. Training itself is a stimulus for dopamine release. Cold water is a stimulus for dopamine release. But if you start doing training, cold water, listening to your your favorite music, plus you're taking, let's say, some stimulant. Doesn't, obviously, the stimulants we've been talking about are, are terrible, but some of the, the stronger stimulants out there used to be ephedrine back when I was in college, but now p people taking Adder rip Adderall. Fuel. Is that rip fuel? <laughs> now illegal, right? Yeah. Now illegal. <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah. Had a, I had a guy I worked with, unfortunately he died, but he, you would, you would see, like he was in my platoon, you would see, he, 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 he would take that, he called it rippy rip. <laughs> well, it's, like, and it readies you. Rip. Actually, you can tell if somebody has a lot of dopamine and adrenaline in their system just by looking at them, their pupils are big. So somewhat paradoxically, when pupils are big, your visual aperture is narrow. That just has to do with the, uh, with the so-called accommodation of the eye, the optics of the eye. So remember, big pupils means somebody is high on their own dopamine and adrenaline. Could be drug-induced, could be situational, et cetera. Small pupils are going to be a relaxed state. Now, of course, it's also going to be modulated by how bright it is in an environment yep. because of the way these systems work. But when you can see somebody wide-eyed, mm -hmm. well, dopamine and adrenaline also do something else. They actually trigger activation of the brainstem cranial nuclei that cause opening of the eyelids. Mm -hmm. They also cause an eyes-up effect. When we get sleepy, what happens? Our eyes go down. Mm -hmm. When we're awake, eyelids are open and eyes are up. They might not be up like this. These are relate to three different cranial nerve nuclei for the future med students. You'll learn what these are. So. It all makes perfect sense when, when, because nature is beautiful and the biology is laid out for us. But if we start stacking behaviors plus pharmacology, plus you know, mindsets that increase dopamine, great. But what that means is that if you get a really big dopamine increase, well then that afternoon you might not feel the drive to do the work. You might think, oh, why am I sleeping in the afternoon? Why am I kind of less motivated? Or next day for training without that pharmacology, 
you're thinking, oh yeah, that th the workout isn't, I don't get the quite as intense a contraction the of the muscles. The train left the yeah, building. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, that exactly. That, that, that's that, what you saw it, the hype train. <laughs> well, I, I'm just thinking about it because, you know, a lot of times people ask me, you know, oh, I, have, I have a hard time, you know, like I, I get fired up to do stuff, but then I don't actually do it. You know, that's a common sort of thing for humans. Mm. And, and now I can kind of track it a little bit. Oh, you got yourself super worked up. And then you let that go or you, you know, maybe you work for a little bit of time, you know, like, hey, writing a book, right? I've written a bunch of books. It's, you're not like hyped to, to write the book. You might, you're like, oh man, this is going to be, um, and you, that only lasts for seven minutes of yeah. typing, bro. That's it. <laughs> it's man. chop wood, carry yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Then it's like, oh, this is just going to suck. And that's just the way it is. But now I realize if you, this is what I like about this. If you're aware of the fact that, oh, this is my dopamine crash, and I can't. Ex I shouldn't anticipate continued hype through this situation. I need to push through it. That's that's, right. that's good awareness to have. Definitely, and you know, nowadays you hear, especially in Silicon Valley, about dopamine fasting. You know, the people. I don't even want to look at somebody else's face. I'm not going to eat any, you know, tasty food. I'm not going to do anything that stimulates dopamine. Sure, that will reset what you find pleasurable. But let's be realistic. The better way to do things would be to modulate dopamine release, control it, make it work for you. Mm -hmm. And everyone's going to differ. So for some people, it's gotta be music, the pre-workout, the, you know, uh, four cups of espresso and, <laughs> and, you know, and someone screaming in their face that they have to do it. Well, for other people, it will require, require fewer of those variables. But everyone needs to learn how they feel both before, during, and after a behavior. You know, I think the right amount of exercise is what you can do consistently and train hard, but that also allow you to perform, unless you're an athlete and that's your, your profession, to be able to do the other things throughout the day that are beneficial to you. And of course, some people are training late in the day and I have no problem with that. Uh, I got kind of attacked by the, the, um, the uh, fitness anistas recently or whatever you call them online because I said, you know, training early in the day sets this dopamine pulse. Like training late in the day has been shown in these 19 studies. Yeah. Sure, I'm sure for when your body temperature is elevated later in the day, um, you know, lubrication of the joints and you know, mental acuity, sure. But for most people who just need to get more movement and are trying to maximize focus and productivity throughout the day, early day training is going to be probably the better option. But bet, some time is better than no time. But if you're training late in the day, and you're getting a big increase in body temperature and you're doing it under bright lights and you're drinking a pre-workout and you're wondering why you can't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you don't have to be Sigmund Freud or a neuroscientist to understand that you're basically just have your body, you're cranking your body temperature up. Hence, a lot of these technologies and here, this isn't a promotion. We don't, at least not now, don't have a relationship to any of them. I won't even name them. There are a lot of technologies now about making your bed cool. Mm -hmm. This mat or that, this, you know, to cool down your, bo your body temperature at night so you can sleep. So if you start thinking about this and you have a rational structure, it makes sense. It also makes sense why, for instance, after a big win, sometimes we feel a crash and we need some time to reset. And that lower depression, sometimes people make the mistake of going out and pursuing more dopamine. One of the areas that I have real concern about just because I hear about it so often and it wasn't an issue when I was growing up is a lot of young guys in particular approach me because they're based on the questions I'm getting, they're, they're watching a lot of really intense pornography. And that has, we know there are studies now going on at Stanford and elsewhere. You know, pornography it, it creates a strong dopamine rush. These are very primitive pathways that in some ways can overwhelm the dopamine system. And then, you know, another thing is happening. There's so a lot of young guys are getting all this arousal from watching other people have sex. And then they're in the real world scenario and it's like, wait, you're no longer third personing this. You're in, you're actually in this scene <laughs> and they, and it's completely collapsing them. And so I'm not one of these anti-porn people. I, you know, I, I'm not here to judge. I'm just a scientist. I'm reporting the, I always say I'm, I'm not a doctor. I don't prescribe things. I'm a professor. So I profess things. You can decide what you want to do with it or not. But if you, once you understand dopamine, that all makes perfect sense. They're getting this enormous dopamine release from something that is external to them and real life you know, may not mimic the intensity of the combination of variables, right? Mm -hmm. Or people are exercising for a little while and it's all exciting to them and they're, and they're you know, taking tons and tons of pharmacology to do it and then they kind of lose motivation. Well, it, remember, non-infinite yet renewable resource.